Hello everyone, this is Lisa from Puzzles by Lisa and today we're going to have a very special video about Elspeth McLean and her puzzles. So this video is going to have actually two parts. The first part, we're going to listen to a conversation with Elspeth and she's going to tell us everything about her puzzles, how she does them, how the collaboration with Ravensburger worked, how did she even get to do puzzles and what other things she's making. I highly recommend to watch all of it. It is very interesting and delightful and Elspeth is absolutely amazing. And in the second part after that, you can see the video that I recorded that is showing all of Elspeth's puzzles. And so then you can actually like enjoy all of them. Here is just like a teaser. This is one of her puzzles, the one that I probably love the most. And let's watch that. If you didn't subscribe, please subscribe and Elspeth. Elspeth! I have to say, I see your mandala on the wall over there and it's like so beautiful. Well, there's one there, yes. It's not too bright in the background. No, I think it's okay. Sure. Cool. So I guess for everybody that uh, don't know, which I think there are no such people, Elspeth, no. the mandala amazing artist, which I'm going to show at least one thing for people to kind of like connect that. But you can see the mandala behind Elspeth over there. So, Elspeth, I'm so excited and I really Aww. can't wait to hear from you about everything. Yeah, thanks for having me and it's nice to see you again. <laughs> yes, Nationals was amazing time to hang out and hopefully we'll have another uh, opportunity at some point soon. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> oh, you're also not far away from here because you're in Canada, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, Vancouver Island, so just a uh, hop over the water from you. Good, because I would be happy to have you here in my puzzle room. Oh my goodness, my whole family wants to come and like see your puzzle room. That just looks like puzzle heaven. It is puzzle heaven, but uh, you're <laughs> welcome anytime. That would be that. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so I have a question to start with. Absolutely. Actually, how did you get into puzzles? That was the first one you had, right? Yes, one dot at a time. Yes, so you know what? Some One of the Ravensburger team had seen some of my art on an online gallery somewhere and they reached out to me and specifically for the image you just held up one dot at a time. So that was 2017, so seven years ago. And now we're, we've just published uh, my seventh puzzle with them. So you had a very large kind of pause between the time that they did this beautiful one and the next yeah. one, I think was like 2022, right? It was, it was, um, yeah, we, 2021, yeah, it came out January of 2022 and yeah, and that was Radiating Rainbow and, and this piece, and I'll show you, where is it? And this is the stone from the very center of that puzzle. So you can see it there. So... I have a question on that. So one, why did you wait so many years or why did Ravensburger wait so many years between the first puzzle and the second puzzle? You know what? I, I don't actually know, but I think what happened worldwide for puzzling was the pandemic. So I think once 2020 hit and we were all at home, that puzzling just skyrocketed and Particularly, uh, my puzzle one dot at a time performed really well. Like it was like a worldwide success. And so, um, and following up from that, we began talking about Radiating Rainbow in December of 2020. So it wasn't timeline that long after it began. Like um, I think it's like the preparation production time and it, yeah, it takes about, it took about a year. Um, for creating the art and then producing the puzzles and then manufacturing and distribution. So that's the only thing that I can chalk down to why it was such a, a wait was that, yeah, when the pandemic came, it showed a real need um, 
for more puzzles in the world. And yeah, yeah, people liked the color and the pattern. So yeah, we've expanded on that. And you showed just right now the stone from this thing. Is that, Yeah. how do you actually create the art for the puzzle? Are you doing stones and then putting- Yeah, yeah actual stones, yes. So um, for Radiating Rainbow and one dot at a time, they, they were all stones. And then I've got the four puzzles as part of the Color Your World collection. So um, yeah, we've got their happy beads with that, which I, yeah, so yes, that was a painting. So the idea behind the Color Your World collection um, is that we wanted to showcase like many different aspects of my art because we de like I definitely have the mandala stones, but I create paintings and I began painting beads and I photograph my stones in nature. So we have the, um, the magnificent blooms, which showcases the flowers as well. And then the tiled one, um, I'm having a mind blank right now. Um, Magnificent man, oh, was that magnificent mandalas? Oh, I'm getting it all tongue twisted. <laughs> yeah, so um, we just wanted to show a different variety of my art. So some of it's paintings on canvas or painting on stones, painting on wooden beads, but it's all real art. Like the, it's not digital. It's all a physical thing. Can you? I think you said you have some beads that you can show, right? Like I do. I um. I will just go grab them. I'll be right back. Okay, I'll enter. So the the oh that. my God, I see all the like colorful bottles behind you. Yeah. It's beautiful. Here we go. So these are a bunch of the beads. That might be easier to see. Yeah, from... put them very close to the camera. Okay, no, no. So... Wow. I'm pretty sure that this little guy, like people would <laughs> recognize this little one and this little one. It looks like this one's wearing the little hat in the puzzle. Oh my God. Yeah. So as, yeah, it's a lot. And this one's definitely in there too. That was the most difficult puzzle from that series, you know? There's been mixed reviews. I'm hearing that the um the tree of life. Um I I I did the um happy beads by myself. Um and you know what? I think because I created the puzzle and like painted the pieces, I was really familiar. Like I would look at a puzzle piece and be like, oh, I know who you belong to. So I feel like I've got a little bit of a head start with that one so i found that one pretty easy i actually i've been told that the um the blooms was the easiest i struggled on that one with the flowers like i felt those hard because it, it was not being my art those were definitely more of a challenge for me so um, because I, you couldn't you couldn't use the details there right like in the well, details yeah, I don't know. Like it was just, I was just so. I've been like on a bit of a um a training streak with my puzzles, so I was so used to do like puzzling my work that when it took to something outside, like with the flowers, I was like, ah, oh, my brain's not there at the moment. So, but you know what? That's what's so great about um that four piece collection is that there's something for everyone. So it, it plays to people's interests and skills. And, and that's what I learned from nationals is that everyone has different taste and what they like in a puzzle and what works well for them. So yeah, it's great to be able to offer that. Well, one thing I really liked was, you know, when you created the, uh, the 500s is that I believe there are people that are threatened by the large piece count. Yes. And I yes. think that was good choice to have. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yep, I was really happy about that for sure. Like, yeah, um, radiating ra radiating rainbow is two thousand, and that's is also big. Like, it takes up a lot of space, and depending on your skill level, that I mean, a puzzle like that takes me a few weeks. So it's like, do you have that physical space? Where, as the five hundred piece, like a friend and I sat down and we did one together one afternoon. We had our charcuterie and some um, nice bubbly drinks, and like, yeah, it's definitely more of a bite-sized experience and also 
um, I just had a friend whose six-year-old completed it. So it's also, um, yeah, it appeals to another demographic as well because kids love my art. They love the colors and the shapes. So I love that that 500 piece was able to reach out to a much broader audience. Did you do the large piece count or not? Pardon? Did you actually complete the large puzzles that you did? You know what? I haven't done the 2000 piece to be totally honest. Um, my daughter was born in 2020. So that was actually the very first piece of art that I created after having my daughter Ruby and having a little one and little puzzle pieces around on a small house don't mix. But now I have a studio that's separate from the house. So this is going to be our puzzle zone. So now that we've moved in, we just moved and settled. It's sitting here waiting. So I can't wait to get onto that. Well, I have to tell everybody, I've seen Ruby in nationals because she <laughs> attended and she's super sweet, but I guess she's not as careful with puzzle pieces. Uh, yeah, well, you know what she's getting now that she's getting a little bit older, she like at nationals, she's got the bug she loves it she's been doing puzzles nearly every day since we got back from nationals and um yeah every morning as soon as she gets out of bed she goes in and does puzzles so maybe in like 10 15 years you'll you'll probably all be competing against <laughs> oh my god that's yeah. so but it's good you're erasing another puzzler you know oh absolutely yep yep and did you like did you happen to do puzzles of like also other puzzles like other artists and stuff like did you try some or at are the you event you know they had the puzzle room i on at nationals i didn't just because i i was doing a lot of socializing <laughs> yeah we i definitely hung out and i and i watched a lot i was absolutely fascinated seeing everyone speed puzzle my mind was just blown so I spent a lot of time in the competition room so no I didn't I didn't I, I picked up some and brought some home so yeah it's gonna happen for sure I I wanted to ask you about you know kind of like the nationals experience both okay. kind of like you know you're in a room and lots of people are doing your puzzle like how like what what went through your head when that happened well, it really, it was kind of a moment of like, I can't believe this is happening. And, and I said it a lot of, a, a lot at nationals is like, this is even greater than my wildest dreams. Cause I don't think I could have ever have dreamt something like this to have happened. So it was beyond a dream come true. And yeah. And, and I create my art alone. Like I work by myself. And so when I create this art and put it out into the world, you know, I kind of send it off. So to actually see people interacting with my art and creating these puzzles, it was like, oh, this is what I do and this is what I do it for. So for me, yeah, it, that actually really meant a lot. Like that was like a real um, career highlight for sure. And I guess question number two on that is, mm -hmm. I would claim that your celestial puzzle is much harder than some of your other puzzles. Yes, and yes. I wonder, do you know, one is what do you think about that? And two, do you have a sense of difficulty when you create a puzzle? Like, like, can you envision like how it's going to be? What is important to you when you do that? Yep, absolutely. So how this all began with this specific image is when um, the team and I were creating the full puzzle collection, Color Your World, I had mentioned that I've got this idea for a space themed image and they said, Oh, this is interesting. Let's let's put this idea aside for later. And so when they invited me to nationals and I said yes, um, part of this was that we were to create a new puzzle that would be released and competed on at the competition. So they said, all right, let's bring out this idea. And so the whole time, like this image that I created was the most in-depth piece of art I've probably ever created. There was a huge, a huge amount of process that went into it. And a big one was that making it for puzzling because it was space. Space is usually predominantly like blues and purples. Like, so we knew that there was gonna be a lot of that color. So I had to do a lot of color swatches and very mindfully, 
if I was had similar colors, I had to play with sizes and spacing so that there would be differentiation. And I did a lot of revisions and we brought in the different elements of the stones on top. So we, that's where we could bring in the pops of yellow and green and orange to yeah, place the clues. So with this particular puzzle, like it was always gonna be hard. It is doable. Um, when I got to see it in person, I was actually relieved looking at the pieces. I was like, oh yeah. And I was like straight into sorting. I was like, okay, it's definitely sortable. Speed puzzling is very challenging, but when you've got, like I call it more of a leisurely puzzle. So just taking your time with it is definitely doable for sure. So yeah, with the other puzzles, like with Radiating Rainbow, um, which was this one here. Yeah, we had to make, if I had, um, so we've got like the line of pink. I always made sure that I've got a few different style of stones that I paint. So I call this style here the sea urchin. And this is the original, I call it like the jewel mandala stone. And then we've got this style here, which I called sacred geometry because it's got like the sort of the sunflower geometry flow. And so I made sure to mix colors and patterns within so colors, patterns and styles. So it didn't double up. So yeah, when I'm creating the puzzles, it was definitely being mindful not to duplicate colors and designs. So yeah, you definitely get to know my art very well because you have to look and be like, oh, well, here's some orange jots. Who are you part of? So yeah, that, and that's part of the challenge for me, which I love. Well, I guess, yes, because, you know, you you can create the stones, right? Which you know how to do. And then you need to kind of add another layer of complexity when yeah. you're designing. And you talked a little bit about, you know, kind of like your a collaboration back and forth with Ravensburger. Yes. Maybe yep. you can tell some more about like how this process works, because I think no one really, you know, have visibility to this, like from the artist perspective. Oh my goodness. Um, so Rachel Pantelli, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. So she is, um, she oversees the artwork and design for uh, the puzzles um, of Ravensburger. And she is phenomenal to work with and which I learned at Nationals. She has a, a history um, previous in graphic design, which learning that I'm like, okay, that makes a lot of sense because she she is amazing she has such like a broad knowledge of art and composition color theory and she also has really good taste she knows um what's going to appeal to the customers she's like she's very connected to what the community wants and so um with all of the designs that we worked of um apart from so the first one, one dot at a time, I'd already created that art. They just chose to license that from me. So going forth, um, all of the artwork that we created together. So um, let's, which puzzle should we do as an example, do you think? Like even, um, I've spoken a little bit about Celestial Constellations, but like with one dot at a time, um, they wanted sort of, um, I had done a previous image that was like that radiating rainbow, which was the um, the warm colors going out to the cooler colors. So um, yeah, we sort of played around with, um, so it took me a couple of months to paint the stones. As I mentioned, um, Ruby was probably about three months old at that point. So it was like getting back to work for me. And so I painted a bunch of like all the stones and I would take like a test shot photo for her and she would maybe go back in and circle a stone and be like, this area feels like it's not green enough. Can we have some more green here? So I would go back and bring some more in. And we also weren't sure if the radiating, um, the, the central stone was gonna be in the center or off center. So I did a bunch of test shoots and then she goes in and thinks, ah, yep, this one works best. And to be honest, like she's, she always chooses like, the best option like she's got really good taste in that way so yeah and then same with celestial constellations she would be like yeah i feel like we need a little bit more pop of color here or there and so like it's it's always really good feedback but also honoring the art like she she makes it like really high importance that it's still like the artist's 
creativity and voice speaking out like she doesn't override anything like that like her job is like to bring out the best in the artists and the artwork and she does yeah she does it beautifully so I love working with Rachel right I have to say I mean I know some of Rachel's work because I talked to her quite a bunch and for like with Ravensburger and I think a lot of the really amazing kind of like collaborations with different companies and artists is Rachel's yeah, yeah, I'm not surprised. Her hand, <laughs> hand fingerprint is there. Yeah. Um, do you take yep. the photos of the of the stones like yourself, basically, and send them to Ravensburger? Like yes, like and my husband helps too. Like my husband, he's got that technical mind of how cameras work, so he does all like the focusing and um, oh my goodness, I can't even ISO. I'm terrible on all the, all the camera side of things and then we'll get the tripod and I'll set it up in position and get it exactly how I want it so yeah it's really great to have my husband Adam help in that part behind the scenes and yeah yeah we also because I I photograph outside on a lightly cloudy day so um I don't use a studio so yeah I I rely a lot on the perfect weather as well so <laughs> Yeah, that's that, always yeah. helpful in, in photography but i have to show that again it's like each one of those things is a real stone it looks like yeah. a picture but it is it's, actually a stone it's real again. yeah i'll just show Absolutely. you that one again like i don't even know if you can see in the camera i also have here the completed piece for celestial constellations i don't know how i'm going to show you this without throwing it everywhere <laughs> um, oh my god but so this one was different that i painted a canvas and i can pick up some individual things and then so there's the stones all over that so i'm like taking you for a journey through unbelievable <laughs> there's, there's the sun a lot of people started with the sun so i can pick up some and show you yeah you can pick up in the middle of the sun or something like yeah actually you had like a lot of this detail. one like the detail how can i even so the detail on this is minuscule so i mean here's my finger for size like how do you do that? here is a question i how don't do know <laughs> <laughs> i know i know it's i just get yeah yeah it's I, i've been doing painting this style of art for close to 20 years now so it's it's a lot of practice and let me show you this stone here this one's a fun one um you might be able to see the texture on that a little bit more and this one spins around like that and then we've got these were a new um so as part of celestial constellations i introduced some stones style of stones i've never painted before so there was like the little shooting star I think this is so cool <laughs> and some comets so you can sort of see the size of them like they're small they're small I mean you're yeah. a magician Elspeth I oh. have a question for the benefit of the audience here that might want to know like there is a way to buy your stones, I believe. Yes, right? yes. So aside from puzzles, the main thing I've been doing for like, oh goodness, like the nearly the last 10 years is I paint and sell the mandala stones. I try and have a collect a little collection every month. Um so I like I set a specific day and time because they do sell out pretty quickly. So I set that time so people know exactly when they can shop those. Um, so actually this month I'm going to do a celestial themed collection, not these stones. I don't know what to do with these ones yet. So I'm just sort of keeping them together, but I'm creating a collection with, um, similar stones to what I painted for this one here. So where and how do you sell them? So if people want to, they can actually. Yeah. Yep. So on my website, which is my name, www.elspethmcclain.com. And so there's a page on my website 
which headline stones and so that has all of the information you could wish to know like like where to shop them on my website and there's a little countdown clock so when i announce great i've got a new collection coming there's a little countdown clock because sometimes we, we all know with time differences they can be confusing so i'm um in pt timing pacific timing but someone in New York or Australia might not know what that means. So I have this little countdown clock. So it'll be like four days, 23 hours. So there is a countdown clock so that you can see, oh, okay, this is how it lines up to my time zone. And that, yeah, and at the scheduled time, they all appear ready to go. And then yeah. they all disappear. <laughs> and then they get to fly all over the world, which is so cool. That is cool. Do you do anything except the stones and the puzzles that people can buy from you? Yeah, so I, I I used to do more painting since becoming a mother. I mean, as you can see, my my work takes a long time. And since becoming a mother, I don't have as much time as I once had. So my larger paintings, I've kind of hit pause on. I do occasionally do artwork for galleries. Um, so... I have things like cards, uh, magnets. I I published a book a few years ago. Oh, I know. So um, yeah, so I have products of my work as well. And then gearing up to the Christmas season, I always have um, a lovely collection of other things that I've painted. Whether that's smaller paintings, I like to have a at least once a year of small smaller paintings too. Yeah. And tell me more about those bottles that are colorful. Oh my goodness, yes. So <laughs> below these bottles, I'll just show you quickly, is a drawer. And I I call that the magic drawer because when I paint my stones, that's where they live in that drawer as I'm building a collection. Uh, so when I've got a complete collection, I like to create a little video featuring the bottles and the stones in the drawer. It's really sweet, but I... I obviously love color and I've like, I love glass. I love stained glass, glass bottles. And so that little collection is continuing to grow. And yeah, it's just a little bit of pop of color to my art studio. Yeah, I know it looks beautiful. And when you got yes. up, I've seen it and I was like, oh, yeah. this is like <laughs> kind of cool. So uh, yeah. definitely like, you know, works well on this studio and everything. Uh, yeah, I have to say, I'm like so happy to hear all of those things. And I, Aww. I'm happy that you came to nationals. Cause you know, I mean, I know your art and I've done all of your puzzles, but, uh, I think to actually like meet for both sides, I think it's very exciting. You know, both oh, people want to meet you as an artist and kind of like get to know who's behind that. And also for you to kind of like see all the puzzlers. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that there's people the artwork and then for us to see like you know the passion that goes into puzzling and and that's what was yeah just so uh amazing for I know all of the artists we were all very wonderfully overwhelmed in a really beautiful way just at how supportive and encouraging everyone was and that really I think that going forward all of us will be bringing that into our work and through anything future that might come out that we'll all have you in our mind and hearts it's like these are the people and beyond that they, this is what who we're doing it for so well, I yeah. guess there is a lot of people that love your art and cannot come to nationals right either because they're not speed puzzlers or you know they just couldn't kind of like work it out or they're from other places from the world yeah, all like, around the world yeah yeah but just to be part of that community there what a weekend that was an absolute highlight like my whole family we had such a great time we all were quite sad leaving <laughs> Well, we all know, always next year, Elspeth. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, Ravensburg are like, I'm available. <laughs> I don't know what everyone else would think about it. Like we, I actually do have an idea for a puzzle, <laughs> which I, I had mentioned it to Rachel. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I think it. that we no. actually called together from here before we finish. Ravensburg are both Elspeth and myself and I believe a lot of other people want more puzzles from Elspeth. Yay, thank you. Aww. Yeah. Okay, want to say goodbye to everybody before I pause the video? Awesome. Thanks, everyone.
Okay, so part one is over. I hope you enjoyed the conversation with Elspeth. And now let's go to part two and look at all the beautiful puzzles. I also have another video that is showing the building the puzzle process uh, that is, you can find it down here. Okay, enjoy the rest of the video. And today we're gonna look at all the puzzles by Elspeth McQueen. I do not have all of them, unfortunately, because I sold a few of the 500s. They really wanted to go to Canada where people couldn't buy them. So I separated with some of my 500s, but I'm going to show you all the beautiful puzzles uh, that I do have and all the ones that I've done that are all the rest. So we're going to look at all the puzzles in all together. It's seven puzzles. I also have another video that is showing the puzzles like more closely and also the process of building them. Uh, but I'm going to explain also right now a bunch of that. So let's start with, I want to start with the oldest puzzle and then actually continue the way that they were created. I do want to say I'm a person that really loves patterns. So to me, doing something like that is absolutely mind-blowing amazing because I really enjoy doing them color by color. I don't look at the box. So to me, to actually like do that is just pure joy because I succeed to figure out which model is going where. Of course, there are some that are always easy and some that are more difficult. But uh, the point is that, that really, I mean, that's my type of puzzle. So if you think that's scary, you might want to just try one um, because it's actually not. So that was the first puzzle that Elspeth had. It came out in 2018. It's called One Dot at a Time. And the way you actually do this puzzle is exactly like the recommendation. One dot at a time, basically. So uh, I really have to say that I, I really, really enjoyed those. I've never seen anything like that before. I had to go get this puzzle I, when I got it and somebody asked me to do it because she really wanted to do some video about this kind of stuff. I, I was amazed at like how much I enjoyed that. And there was nothing else at the time with Robert's Burger that was similar to that. Um, and definitely I've looked at the name Elspeth McLean and I didn't know who she was, but I just knew that like I'm definitely a huge fan. Elspeth actually is an Australian person that lives in Canada. And so I met her and I'll put some photos of her in this video so you can actually see how, um, how she is as a person. She was super delightful in the nationals to like everybody. And I have to say that I want more puzzles. I want more puzzles. Uh, so that was the first one I've done, and then later, four years later, came this one. And this one is called Radiating Rainbow Mandalas, and it's from 2022. And I, I ordered it from Germany. I believe you can order it right now in the U.S., and if there is a puzzle that I can recommend to you to get, look at how colorful that is. There is definitely like a lot more mandalas than in this puzzle here. And it's also more colorful and I love it that actually the middle is yellow and red because my color is yellow. So every single time I start a puzzle, I find myself starting with the yellow somehow and actually working my way out to other colors. Uh, but I, I, I enjoyed that like crazy. And again, I, I put another video that shows actually the process of putting it together. Um, it's not really a scary 2000 piece puzzle. Like there are some that are very scary, like ones with tigers and stuff like that. This one is pure delight in my opinion. So later on, I guess people figured out that it might be somewhat hard to convince everybody to do that huge piece count. And so Ravensburger and, and Elspeth have come with four different 500 piece puzzles. Now they're not all in the style of mandalas, I would say that's kind of different. So if, again, I still recommend to do the mandalas the large piece count because I actually love them the most. Uh, this, so the first one was Tree of Life and I think that one was published pretty much everywhere. So you probably have seen this puzzle somewhere for sure. Uh, most of the mandala stuff is, there is the, the uh, area of the tree. It's not really a mandala, but around the tree, there is a big mandala. And that one you can get mostly, I think, in Barnes and Noble. And definitely you can get also the other three that I'm going to talk about right now. So the next one you can see on the screen is called in Mandala Blooms and it's from 2023 as well. And that is a puzzle that actually have four parts to it. Some parts are more mandala and some parts are 
uh, not I think from the four or five hundreds that is my uh, personal favorite because parts of it really reminded me more of the large piece count puzzles uh, and it's also nice because there is separation between the colors so if you like sorting by color like this is the perfect puzzle among them um, the next one is magnificent mandalas and that is a puzzle that just has a lot of mandalas you can see it uh, now it's definitely a beautiful puzzle and uh, has again some of the mandala touch but they're it's much much smaller piece can so you don't get into the different layers of each mandala the way that you would if you had like bigger mandalas or higher piece count and then the last one from that that set is happy beads which is also 2023 and that one is the most difficult among the 500s and it's because it's just more busy actually it doesn't have mandalas in it but again there is patterns so if you like patterns it's definitely like a very good one uh but no mandalas which is really my most favorite thing and then came 2024 and in 2024 uh was the usa jpa the usa jigsaw puzzle uh, competition and uh, Ravensburger and the USAJPA board decided that it would be really great to bring artist and person and one of them was Elspeth that came to the competition and so this puzzle was revealed during the competition it's called um, Celestial Constellations and you can see actually on this one there is the logo for USAJPA and there is also Elspeth personal signature because she was there and she was delightful and that will look more difficult to me before I have done it because you look and you see like all of this uh, blue and a lot of purple and like even the colors here are kind of the same except of course so of course what I did I started by taking out all the red and yellow stuff and just doing them as I said I'm a yellow person so I'm anyway would do that uh, but after putting together all the yellow stuff, starting to dive into the different layers of the mandala, there are definitely like a lot of differentiation and like I could easily find, you know, that type of color or I could easily find some of the lines like you can see here, the lines is like are surrounding things, you can actually see them. Of course, all the small symbols here, you can see them. So in the end, I have to say, I was so happy to do yet another puzzles by Elspeth that I can just say I, I want more. I really want more of those. Each one of those is just absolutely perfect and I can't wait for more puzzles to come, which I hope they will do. So if you're wondering if you should try one, the answer is definitely yes. I highly recommend to try one. And I also want to say if you want to see more puzzles coming from artists, I think that people really care about like how many of them are being sold and so the more an artist is selling probably the more likely we're going to see more of those puzzles coming in the future so i really want to recommend to support uh, those artists and actually get their puzzles so we can see actually more of them coming in the future um, other than that i would say thank you for watching get yourself some mandalas and see you next time bye bye